This episode is sponsored by Caddy Shack Bistro, your favorite new watering hole. Located next to Crust Pizza Company on Spring Cypress and Champions Forest Drive in Spring, Texas. A place where dreams come true. The finest spirits, wine, and tasty food. It's where the locals go. Use code BEERNERD20 to get 20% off your next order. I want to know what you're thinking. It's Morbid Time. some things you can't hide. I want to know what you're feeling. Tell me what's on your mind. All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Front Row Negative, the podcast. We are back for our, I guess, monthly episode now, what it's turning into. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, I'm non-committal. <laughs> or Aaron's yeah. non-committal. I don't know what it is. Hey, hey, it's, you know, <laughs> life, life happens, things happen. Uh, it's life. Phantom yeah. heart attacks happen. It's a whole thing. Phantom heart attacks, beer runs. Going out for smokes and never coming back. B W L R U N. Beer run, beer run. You hear that? You remember that? No, I didn't. I you I didn't heard watch. That? No. Is that rawhide or something? Hmm. Uh, you know, I don't know where the song is from. I just remember hearing it as a kid, and then of course, you know, when I went in my twenties and it came back for a, return, a triumphant return. You You're do? on your own there. You were definitely on your own. That's fine. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I I'm your host, Aaron. And I'm with Tired Housing. Ah, uh, yes, yes, Tired Housing. Listen, man, um, we were kind of pre-gaming earlier, and I'll just go ahead and say it. Like, what I, I already know that one of the biggest blessings of my life will be our daughter, who's going to be here in November. Um, yep. And she'll be a miracle that will change my life in all kinds of wonderful ways. But as it stands right now, <laughs> this child – who's not even technically here yet, mm-hmm. has already stressed me the fuck out. I Oh, it only gets worse. Oh, dude, over the last two days, I've had this overwhelming sense of impending doom looming over my shoulders. I've had this heaviness in my chest. I legit thought I was having, mm-hmm. like, a, a slow uh, heart attack or something, like a gradual heart attack. Yeah. And, of yeah. course, you know, I did what any moron would do is start Googling to see if I can diagnose myself because I'm a fucking idiot. The doctors told and me not to Google stuff. I know. Idiot. And I was just like, yep, that's me. Yep, that's me. That's me. I'm dying. And so, like, <laughs> I uh, I started oh. Googling to find a place. I went. I ended up going to a place in Clear Lake because I don't have any interest. I'm an artist. God forbid we make a living and be healthy. But um, I uh, went there. They EKG'd me. They took blood out of me. They X-rayed me. Uh, they're like, um, everything's good, man. And uh, they said, you mentioned you're having a kid, right? It's like, yeah. It's like, well, you're probably stressed the hell out. I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and so <laughs> tomorrow at 9:45, I got a, I, I have a stress test scheduled where my yeah. uh, my pleasantly plump ass is going to get on a bike or a treadmill and they're going to walk me for an hour. I'm going to hate it. <laughs> and I'm going to reward myself with coffee after I'm done. And you just mowed the lawn. I just mowed the lawn today. It's like six ish. Yeah. Just fuck this weather. Uh yeah, interesting day today. I I but I'm I, here. I know what you're feeling. I went through it twice. I mean, right now I have an American werewolf in second or going into second grade in September or August, <laughs> and then I've got the world's oldest three nager that's going into this fifth grade. <laughs> three nager, Paul Parker, a three nager. No, I call it going to three nager. Par- oh. Parker Parker's the American werewolf going into the second grade. Oh, okay. I misheard. See, look, I'm I'm so stressed out that my I can't even process information right now. This is going to be a really interesting podcast. You know, you, by your age, you're supposed to be able to count, and right now, I'm counting on you to be in this podcast. I'm counting on this kid killing me before she gets here. But yes, that's you their job. Your whole office. Yeah, I had to move my whole damn office, and I'm not even hey, done yet. I've moved my office twice. Oh, once, God. once, once out of choice. The second time, because I didn't, I didn't have a choice. So. <laughs> It, it happens. It this one was the letter. Yeah. It, it definitely happens. But I will say this because of these kids, I'm able to experience the finer things in life. Like the fact that Goody Goody Liquor has a rewards program, Specs Liquor has a credit card. <laughs> and that, you have and a Specs H-E-B, Liquor credit card? No, I don't have one yet. And, say, that, holy shit. and that HEB has some of the finest. 
has some of the finest local breweries selections <laughs> at their stores. They do, man. But I'm just I, every time I go grocery shopping, I don't. I I, I, I tell myself I want to be adventurous, and then I don't be. And I grab like just something like from like uh, St. Arnold. You know? you know, I did that too. But then when they start making cans like you know this Carbot Clutch City, uh, hey, you got to step yeah, out. Not a bad beer, actually. You left some over last time with Pivot. I I killed them all. They're, they're good, aren't they? Yeah. Very delicious. So, yeah, the kids let me experience those things in life, like alcohol, beer, blackout drunk. Melatonin, cough syrup, and the occasional sleeping pill. So oh my God. you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So let's go from that to talk about you had a busy weekend this past weekend. Oh, man, you ain't kidding. Listen, you had a um, busy weekend. So let's go from talking yeah. about alcohol and surviving the day to drinking alcohol at a convention that you attended. Surprisingly, I didn't drink any alcohol at said event. At said event. They didn't, even though they had a beer garden, right? Did they? I had no idea. I mean, they had the random stands or whatever, and I, we only went to the third floor like one time because my goddaughter uh, wanted to show us the neon room or whatever. Um, <laughs> nah, man, again, I had like, I just felt like death was following me this whole weekend, and I was just <laughs> well, like... Well, she was, but I think she was a ghostbuster. A ghostbuster. <laughs> I didn't bring my uh, my uh, ecto trap. No, no, I, no, man, like, no, because she was busting ghosts the band. And uh, calling, oh, them, uh, yeah, yeah. calling them Scooby Doo uh, running music. I know that's yeah. For Haley to call uh, ghost music Scooby Doo chase uh, chase sequence music. <laughs> like let's get out of here, Scoob. Rats. It's like it's how is that even? I don't know. She made the video. Kids have opinions. What are you gonna do? Hey, she's not wrong. Yeah, to an, to an, to an extent, I. I she's not wrong. <laughs> I listen to those videos. Yeah. Well, you know, and I dude, don't don't think it didn't cross my mind to throw one or two back over the weekend. It's just, you know, and this mm-hmm. is the first time my wife's hearing this. I was just the whole weekend. I was having fun. But when I was alone, I just had this feeling like this is my last weekend. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to be like yeah. all gothic and weird. I was just like, Ooh. I felt like I was slowly dying. Honestly. No, it's not your last weekend. Or metaphorically, it's not your last weekend. Um, basically, next year after the kid comes, you will start looking at weekends that you can do as a family. And then when the kid gets old enough, you'll be looking at weekends to get rid of your kid to go back to pre-kid weekends. There's nothing I want more than to have a weekend <laughs> with my kid and my wife for sure, yeah. <laughs> and then you'll be like, okay, I need, I need time away from the kid. I need a break. It will happen. It will happen. Because right now, uh, there is not a ball pit big enough that will keep my kids at bay from coming home if I threw them in there. They will find their way home. <laughs> you give them the Frankenstein monster treatment, just poof, yeah, just in there. Chuck, chuck them in that river, John Wayne style, and they will still come back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, I um, I'm sure you're right, man. I just yeah. it's like my whole life has just changed, and you know. I, yeah, it's a good thing. It is a good thing. It's just it's all new for me. Mm-hmm. And so like I literally, this is not a pity party. I just literally felt like I need to entertain my goddaughter and I need to make yep. sure my wife comes in this comes with me Sunday because I don't know if this is my last weekend to do it ever again. You know. But well, how was the convention? How was it? It was actually pretty fun, man. I um. Uh, my buddy uh, Darren, who owns Unknown Comics, I'm doing a mini series with them. Okay. Uh, and so he was like, "Hey man, I got these extra passes." I was like, "Yeah, hell yeah, dude! Free, you know, free ninety nine. I'll go, you know." <laughs> and so, uh, no, we had fun. I mean, I I paid parking on Saturday, and the it was thirty two dollars, and the parking mm-hmm. uh, Sunday was thirty five dollars, and so. You know, there an Astros game the and there was Astros game the same day, so all yeah, the parking was. was jacked up and yeah. like that. But no, it was good, man. I, it was nice. It was refreshing. I, I've been taking a break, honestly. And for those who know, like I had a small store for a while. Um, I hadn't really been doing shows. Um, I was just trying something different in life because I was newly married. I needed to do something to, you know, another. It was a, almost another forbidding sense of doom that I need to quit being a kid and go. Yeah, be a, a grown man and open up a business and, and make income, which I did. 
and it was not a failure at all. I, I was I did so well that another company wanted to buy me out, so I can't really complain. But um, the only complaint I have was like uh, my weekends were shot, and yes, you know, I think my wife could attest to the fact that she saw a little less of me than she wanted to, because um, usually I would come home, have dinner, spend a little time, watch a little bit of TV, and then right back to the office to work. It was just constant go, go, go. Um, and so I think really, you know, whether you believe in a higher power, however you look at life, but I feel like it was like, it was time for me to sell the store yeah, and get back home because I guess, you know, the plan was for my wife to be with child. And so I needed to yeah. shift my focus back to what I really want to do. And that's illustrate. And so that's where I'm at. Do it. Yeah. So you got uh, free 99 tickets. What did you <laughs> see? What did you see? Oh man. Uh, you know, uh, there was, I, I didn't have a problem with the things I saw. I, I know a lot of people were complaining about um, a lack of comics uh, in Comic Palooza. Um, okay. You know. It, <clears throat> so what? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, so one thing I did see to kind of ask about that. Um, one of the complaints I saw online, uh, which was the lack of co- comic book creators, not yes. local, not local creators. Well, but no. actual comic book creators like you know Capullo and Lee, heavy hitters, yeah, big they have names. some of the heavy hitters, some of the big names. Because in the past we had them, or uh, I think not, not we, the company had them. <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to keep reminding myself it's not we, they had them. So right. they had them. They they, they were uh, big supporters of bringing those people in to kind of satisfy the comic book fan scene. So I know in the past. Um, with Comic Palooza, <clears throat> there are a lot of um, staff members and volunteers who, when they see a negative comment or a critique, they tend to go gangbusters on that person, ridicule the fans and ridicule people in the comment section. And you can always tell who is a staff or who's volunteer by how they act. Yeah, that's a bad hat, man. You can't be doing that. So, with that, uh, with the celebrities that they announced, I know a lot of them canceled. A lot of them came through. Uh, to you, since you attended, how was the balance? You know the um, the I'll, I'll, okay. and speak so, and, and you can speak you can speak truly because we are not sponsored by Comic Palooza. We are not paid for by Comic Palooza. Uh, I have no gripes against them. I left on my own free will. I did not attend this year just because. Nothing really had my attention to go. Nothing really made me want to go, you know? So Yeah, and I'll be honest with you. If I didn't have a friend who let me in, I don't know that mm-hmm. I would have went either. Yeah. Uh, because, quite frankly, it's just, you know, I, for what the price is to get in. Okay, so rewind back to a number of years ago to where, uh, and I'm sure we probably told the story before, but, like, whenever controlling interest of Colin Palooza left the hands of John Simons mm-hmm. and went to the Houston Tourism Department, Yes, um, the city, basically. The, the city. Went to the control of the city. Um, a lot of ears were there and heard the person who was heading the, things up saying they wanted to make it like San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, they did. So here's the problem with that. As an artist, um, if I want to go do San Diego, San Diego Comic Con, I could. I just don't want to pay for flight and all the expenses to be there. Mm-hmm. But you know how much they charge <clears throat> artists for tables in Artist Alley at San Diego Comic Con? Oh, I, oh yeah. Um I forget his name, but uh, my cousin Macy, her artist, the artist that she follows, Chris, uh, I forget his name, but he does the, he does the portraits, the mm-hmm. black and white portraits. He, he, he's very transparent about how much he pays for the table, what they charge him for setup and all that. He, he's very transparent about that. And it's quite a bit. So, well, you uh, know, they, they have unions out there, I think. Yeah. Um, but the thing is like for like for myself, and maybe mm-hmm. they've changed in the recent years. Uh, I've looked into doing San Diego before. Um, yeah. Back when I did look into it, um, it was kind of a lottery system. It was a yes. sign-up system. And yes. if they picked you, then they didn't charge you for the table. But, I, again, I don't know if that's changed or not. It probably has. But at one point, you know, mm-hmm. San Diego, they handpicked what they wanted for the artist alley. So I know, yeah, they did. depending on who you ask, my, that might seem unfair. But yep. – when you're San Diego Comic Con, you want the best representation that you can get in your, yeah. you know, for your attendees who you spend thousands and thousands of dollars to be there. Yeah. They, you want to give them the best product you can give them. Um, yeah. So, you know, Con Palooza wants to be like 
San Diego Comic Con will then take a page out of San Diego's book and be a little more selective. Now, that being said, I'm not trashing what I saw in Artist Alley. Please understand, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not tearing down one to raise another. Nothing like that. Okay, I'm strictly coming from what I would have spent money on. Uh, yeah. Uh, to me, if you're going to have uh, a craft show, then you should make a crafts section. Yes, okay? and that's not tear. I'm not again. That's not tearing anybody down. <laughs> but as an artist who's had a spot at Artist Alley, when I've been surrounded by cutesy pink stuff everywhere, fluffy shit, yeah. and you know everything, a guy who might be into Venom might not mm-hmm. see me because all he sees is a bunch of fluffy shit and he thinks to himself, eh, "Yeah, not my bag," and walks away. Yes, uh, I do remember the the two years that. You had jewelry makers or an X2 illustrators right next to what would you call it? Like um, decal sellers, like people who sell the decals right next to people who had like instant mugs, tumblers, uh, the, the stuff. There, there was no organization with it. And I do remember that yeah. because not only were artists complaining about it, but also the craft makers are complaining, too. So mm-hmm. you, you had a big thing, but the pro, but one of the small problems with that, that I would always hear is that nobody really comes to see the craft makers. To be honest, they don't, they don't come to, they don't come to buy bottle cap jewelry. They don't come to buy doilies or That's knitted, all legit impulse buys yeah. <clears throat> or, or, or knitted, you know, Funko pop t-shirts for your Funko pop figure. They right. don't. Uh, people come to artist Sally for the artists. The craft makers are such a, for some of them, it's such a specific niche that there are people who go there and do no business at all. And there are some people who go there and, you know, they, they rake in the money and stuff like that. So, right. um, now, and, and uh, to, to follow that point up, and I hate to interrupt you, I'm sorry, yeah. but I want to point out because we're talking about how, I guess you're getting to the point that they probably should go back to maybe putting all crafts together and all this together. Um, there is a, there has to be something set, okay, yes. for a varying degree of skill mm-hmm. and product uh, quality, okay. There should be, and that was, and one of the meetings that we had, that was brought up to where people who are submitting to buy a table at Artist Alley or whatever, um, for the for especially for Comic Palooza, should have a, either a portfolio and Etsy store that they can provide proof of. A lot of things that they can provide proof of that way when they just show up there, they're not just spring their junk to sell. They're not they're not pulling um <clears throat> basically coming up there selling their, their toys from their closet, like some people did there a few times and not get caught, but the people who provide a portfolio to sell their wares to show what they're yeah. actually selling. That way it kind of right. limits the amount of you know sticker makers because there's at one time I think we had like 30 different decal makers that were mm-hmm. at Comic Palooza in, in one aisle. And it was insane. It, it was it was crazy. But I can tell you though, like if, if somebody was in with intent on mm-hmm. coming to Comic Palooza to literally buy decals for their car, if you had all the decal vendors in one spot, yeah. That is where you can send people when somebody comes up, hey, are there any people here selling vendors or vendors selling decals? Oh, they're on the front part of 1800 or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and I know that vendors, the first thing a vendor's going to tell you that's unfair because then they're going to feel like they get drowned out by all the other people that are selling the same fucking decal or yeah. Well, guess what, Dingleberry? It's the same thing for me as an artist when I'm drawing up a cool Joker or a cool Venom. Well, guess mm-hmm. what? There's 80 other artists there who have mm-hmm. their own take on Joker and Venom too. But you know what I can't complain about? The open market. All I'm simply yeah. saying yeah. is, if if because I did it this weekend. I did it this weekend. <laughs> <clears throat> on Saturday, yeah. on Saturday, when I went through artist alleys, I went up and down the aisles numerous times, just you know, window shopping to see what I could find. Let me tell you what I walked right past. I walked right past Kawaii pink shit because it's not my market. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm 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 proving my own point by saying like if if an art if a guy comes there and it's like man I want a fucking dope ass Deadpool. And all he sees is a bunch of fucking fluffy llamas and shit, and he can't fucking find an artist. He's not. He might miss me, and I might yeah. have a wonderful piece of artwork that he could buy from me to help me pay my yeah. damn bills. You know. So I'm not saying that you take away craftspeople, handmade yeah. craftspeople, but it should be a little more organized 
it, no one's trying to tell you that you can't be around somebody yeah. who has cool art, but like, listen, Linda, you know, no wonder uh, I've talked to some vendors, some vendors did well, but placement is everything. The vendors I talked to did really well. were exposed on in caps and shit like that, where everybody saw them on the main drag. Yeah. Okay. Those guys are going to make their money because yeah. they paid the extra money for that corner and people are going to see them. Okay. Yeah. But like for myself, when they're constantly jacking the price up on tables and stuff like that, I, if I'm going to pay as much as I'm going to pay, mm-hmm. uh, I'd like a fair shot at making some income. I know yeah. it's not Comic Palooza's problem to care about whether or not I make money because they got their money. So why would they give a shit? But the point is, you should give everybody a fair shot because it is fair. It's fair. Yeah. Like, you don't go to the grocery store looking for bread, right? Mm-hmm. And they got the wheat, the wheat's over here by nacho cheese, and then, then the fucking uh, the rye bread's over here by the salmon, right? Yeah, that's true. So what the fuck, you know, what's the point? Like, how is it that hard to understand? Organize it correctly to where when people come, okay, if you want to take the chance and make your kawaii stuff, all your mm-hmm. cute shit, and you know going in that there's a lot of other people making the same shit you're making, uh-huh. And you still want to buy a table, then you took your chances, just like I did. If I knew that I was going to go to Artist Alley, and it was literally going to be all artists and stuff like that, I'm yeah. confident I would make my money. That's not yeah. braggadocious. That's just saying, I know I'm bringing quality products. Okay. 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 So, you know, that's that's one of the things. That was one of the main things for me. Is like that's why I'm kind of, I'm about to start getting back into doing cons, and mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing I hate about cons is that they they. They want to they want to mishmash all this stuff together, which I understand where they're coming from. They're trying to make they, they think that the guy who wants to buy the stuffed llama that's neon green also wants to buy a venom uh, poster. That may not be the case. <laughs> Highly unlikely. <laughs> I, <laughs> but, I, you know. I I definitely know that. I know that uh uh one of the one of the times I remember one of the years when after we did the comic close the one of the biggest complaints we got from vendors was uh. There was a surge in a candle make, like people selling scented candles and pirate gear that people were complaining about pirate clothing and scented candles that homemade candles or, or homemade soaps or whatever. And I remember hearing, right. I'm like, I was like, why are you mad at them? They, they weren't even on the main floor. They were off right. to the corner. But then the next year you had like four times the amount of people doing those things attending and yeah. they were all spread out. But it wasn't as bad as the one year that we that were I guess um commercial companies bought boots to promote That's stuff. Horrible. Yeah. They and, gotta stop doing that shit. And comic the, the people who ran Vendor Alley put them all over the place, but it, more importantly more importantly, they put them at one of the entrances. So as soon as you're walking in, you're getting bombarded by spin this wheel, uh, fill out this form on this uh, iPad. Uh, yeah, text, nobody wants to do text that. This number. Nobody. Text this number, you know, that people were bombarded by that. And I remember that got a lot of bad. Uh, yeah, I avoid that shit like the plague. As a, as a con goer, I'm not, yeah. I don't want to win a trip to fucking Acapulco or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. and I know, con, again, so, I can see where Kong mm-hmm. wouldn't care because yeah. at the end of the day, if T Mobile is willing to spend $5,000 for That's four right. or five spots, they don't give a shit. They're going to take the money. That's what the whole point is for the con is to take the money. Well, guess what, though? Yeah. You now created a vacuum. <laughs> no one's going to want to fuck with that spot, and whoever uh, the other vendors are around there are going to suffer for it. Yep that that is that yeah that's that's true. So <clears throat> despite that, um, how many? Okay, so like so you attended. I didn't attend. I didn't look up the guests or anything. Were there any big name comic book guests this year? Yes, there was. Uh, off the top of my head, I know for sure Jock was there. Uh, okay. Those who are familiar with comics know that he's done a lot well, of great. Uh, Jock covers. also does uh, Mondo. He does Mondo too. Oh, he does. Okay, I yeah. didn't know that. Okay, I well, got then, yeah. Yeah, I got one of his uh, steel books. I think I have the steel book for either Thirty Days of Night or for Shaun of the Dead. I got one of his steel books that he that I met him at MondoCon that he autographed. That's badass. So, so, so I've got yeah, one of there the, was there was literally just three names from this in, from the comic industry that were there two artists and a writer and not really? to mention yeah yeah and all three of them were stuck in stuck away where you couldn't find them i never found jock's table by the way wow i, I went all over that fucking con i couldn't find it wow so then again i probably could have asked somebody but <laughs> i really honestly <clears throat> should i have to if you could find somebody 
Yeah, if you can find somebody. <laughs> but like, should I have to ask where one of the big name comic artists are at Comic Palooza, or shouldn't mm-hmm. they be uh, featured? Yeah, they should be featured. I I, I will say this. Um, one of the years when Bacon first started doing it, so first starting helping out, helped me out as my assistant at Comic Palooza, mm-hmm. we brought Scotty Young in. Yes. And nobody could find him. Because That's insane. First, on the app and in the and in the guide, he was marked at the wrong table. He was his number was at the wrong table. Secondly, they never got his banners printed. So oh my God. <laughs> he was literally sitting at a table with his dice because he does the dice thing. Yeah. And he and he wrote his name on a sharpie on a white piece of paper and he wrote what he like what he charges for uh, a bus sketch, headshot, a full color, uh, roll of the dice. And then a buy a print, autographs, all that. He, he had his stuff set up. So you kind of had to know where he was at, what he looked like, and his art style to, fi- to find him. And I remember uh, Sully from NerdFu and from Funko was like, where is he at? And I'm like, yeah, he's over there. Where? I'm like, at the end of the table over there. And Sully's like, well, there's just a guy wearing a white t-shirt. I said, that's him. That's him. That's ridiculous. Get, get in line. He's got like two people in front of him. Get in line. But that's Scotty Young. And I remember other people couldn't find him because he was he was listed wrong in the program, listed wrong on the app. And it was he was sitting there. I mean, I, I know he made bank because, you know, well, sure. I mean, Scotty he's not the regulars and stuff like that. But like the complete nonsense of it is, is Scotty Young. Yeah, people you, people knew he was there. They just didn't know, didn't know where he was at. Right. And so it's like, and there were. Yeah, I can guarantee you when back when Stan Lee was with us, God rest his soul. I bet mm-hmm. I, I can guarantee you his fucking section wasn't hard to find. Yeah, had the longest line. Right. <laughs> yeah, the longest exactly. line. Yeah. That was so, it. Just look for the line. You know, it's 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 just. <laughs> and I know that I, I know I'm sitting here, you know, armchair quarterback in this whole thing. I get that. And that's what a lot of people would say, but yeah. No, I'm sorry. I, I don't think I am. I just think it's common sense. Like, it's not that difficult. Uh huh. It's Who's not like if I had the money and the and I, if I want to run my own con, I can definitely do it and I, and it would be successful like quickly. Yeah, because I well, have common sense. Well, let, let's jump away from the bad things and like yeah. what are the things that you enjoyed at this convention? What what are some of the good things? Because you show me some stuff. And I saw your social media pictures uh, yeah. that that you picked some stuff up. What were some of the good things? You know, I, I will say this for as. As unorganized as some of it was, uh-huh. there still was a good selection of different kinds of things. They and that's something that I can always say about Conflux. They're going to bring in a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's something there for everybody, and that's what you want, especially if you're trying to make it a pop culture con. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they were lacking in selection of things to purchase. Um, you know, I didn't. Uh, I didn't at first. Okay, the way the the way their panels were done this year. Yeah, uh, they were set up towards the back of the main hall on the on the first floor, back okay. where all the food booths are against the wall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by load in, uh, but they were they were open open panel, you know, open floor plan panels, and they were all labeled as like aqua or uh, oh, gold okay. or topaz okay. or whatever. Okay. Um, I don't think at first I was I was not impressed. I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad because there's gonna be audio quality competing against each other for people's attention, and shit like this. Yeah. Um. Well, we that, kind of experienced that at when whenever whenever we went to uh, Alamo City Comic Con at the Alamo Dome, they did that where they had it yes. like just in different areas. And I remember um, the Nightmare Before Christmas panel, like over audioed the Sharknado panel, so right. th- there was a lot of sound wars or uh, audio wars going on. From what I could tell at Comic Palooza, there were like four stages, four panel yeah. stages, I think. I, I I tried watching to see how they were doing it. I think they were alternating time slots with yeah. um, spaces between. So, like, you had gold, aqua, topaz, and emerald. Yeah. Gold and aqua were doing their panels at one time with the stage the in between being like, empty. Yeah. So that okay. way their audio wasn't drowning each other out. Oh, okay. Podcast was nice too. And podcast was at the very end. Podcast had a relatively small section, but there were, like, five or six different podcasts representing themselves there as tables around the podcast uh, uh, show area. Yeah. And it worked out actually pretty well. Because I was, I was really, honestly, I was like, well, where the hell are the tables? Because nobody can sit down and eat their food. But then as I thought about it, I was like, okay, I think I know what they're going for here. Because there might be some panels, no offense, that would be boring and nobody's going to give a shit about. Yeah. But if you just buy your hot dog and your popcorn and you're tired of shit and you're going to sit down, guess where you're going to sit? At a panel. 
So at least the people yep. doing the panels won't feel bad about not having well, anybody there. Well, that and that whenever you take picture, whenever you take pictures of panels and there's people there, that's a seat filler too. Right. It's right. So mis- I think it's that McMahon you know, mentality. Yeah. So I, mean, so I, I see what they were going for there. Yeah. Uh, it made sense. Yeah. So that was good. Um, no, I mean, honestly, uh, I didn't really hate it. I don't think it was overly disorganized or anything. Um, my, my, one of my biggest complaints is, which is never going to change, but like the first thing you see when you go to the show is, is the vendor section. You're, it's yeah. always going to be that. Yeah. And then after that, it's going to be, con- it's going to be uh, artist alley slash, uh, you know, sign. garage sale slash, uh, um, you know, Etsy, Etsy live, Etsy, Etsy aisles. Yeah. And there was no sign. You know what though? That's, there was no signage dis- distinguishing when artist alley started. Okay. I mean, but that's, I mean, minor, unless you're just like, we didn't know. We, were like, we didn't know either. Yeah. But like, if you're paying post up since you're like, okay, I'm starting to see, you know, they didn't have anything wow. hanging from the hanging from the rafters this time because they did last. Uh, they did, but it was 19. just the aisles. It was just oh. the aisle numbers. It was like 17, oh, 18, okay. 1900, whatever. Okay. That's all they, they had. Didn't have that big hanging sign. They didn't have it. Yeah, they didn't have the sign for artist gallery or anything. Um, well, you know, maybe they spent the money on neon signs up on the third floor. Maybe they had to buy neon. Yeah. So, so, I mean, uh, so yeah. who did you meet? I on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, it was me and my goddaughter went and. She was doing her thing, and I, uh, I walked over to artist, you know, artist alley, uh, celebrity, the celebrity area, yeah, just to kind of stargaze and see, you know, all the famous people. Mm-hmm. And also, I was walking around, you know, as this is not a secret that we're wrestling fans. I saw Hangman Adam Page's table with like literally nobody there. I was like, what the hell is this? Flashback. Flashback. Yeah, exactly. It was just <laughs> like uh, Super Card of Honor in like, like Super 2017. Card. Yeah. Um, 2018. 2018. Yeah. I was just like, what the hell is this? And so I think I called Nicole, the video called her, and I showed her, like, look, he's got nobody at his table. And so we kind of had a chuckle about that, like you said, about the throwback to it. Yeah. And I was like, should I do that? Should I go see him? Because it's like, it would be really cool to meet him. And she's like, well, yeah, if he's not got a spot, if he's nobody there, might as well. Because I think Adam Cole canceled. Britt Baker was advertised for 20 seconds and she was gone. So, um, I ended yep. up going over there, and he was really a sweet dude, man. Like it was like sixty bucks for the photo op and the autograph picture. Yeah. And I even walked up when I told him uh, to meet him. I was like, "Hey, man, huge fan, obviously." You know. Uh, I said, "Um, I said, quick story if you don't mind." He's like, "Go ahead." I said, "Um, my wife is pregnant with our child, and the doctors have made it to where she needs to be bed rest more often than not, and so she couldn't be here today." Um, would it be possible if you could at least say hi to her real quick on my Facebook video chat? He's like, yeah, man, sure. So I called her up and I was like, Hey, look, I'm here with somebody. <laughs> and she like started talking to him and he was super sweet to her. And that's awesome. Carried a conversation. He's like, hi, I'm Hangman. I was like, I know. Yeah. He was like, hi, I'm Hangman. Like, it's just, yeah, exactly. Like who? Like what? Um, and he was so nice, man. And it was like, you know, just super cool dude. I, I told him like, yeah, my, my daughter, who's not even born yet has been to two AW shows in town. He's like, oh yeah, that's where I wrestled to catch it. I was like, yeah, she was there for it. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> that's awesome. It was cool, man. Yeah, and then the Edwin second day, he mentioned the Takeshi match to him too. Apparently, he really liked that match. Apparently, yeah. Um, yeah. And then the second day, we uh, we came and after, like I said, oh, I, I guess we pre-gamed that, but like, okay, so some asshole pulled a fire alarm on Sunday at Conkalooza, and so. Uh, it just it, the whole entire ant hill went shit bat shit crazy. Some people were going outside, some people weren't. We were kind of waiting in the in the <laughs> lobby area to kind of figure <laughs> okay. out what was going on. Wow. And um, Nicole heard one of the GRB people like on their little radio. She heard like, "Oh, we have the all clear. We have the all clear." And she was like, "Go to Alice Cooper now." So like, I she was in a wheelchair because the doctors weren't walking around. So I had to push my wife back over real fast to the celebrity section to. Um, <laughs> to get over there and we got there and there was literally a, a very small small line for alice cooper and really? when we pulled up yeah we, well i think because everybody's coming back from the the alarm thing or whatever okay, but okay. The, one of the handlers was like um oh you guys here for alice cooper's uh we're like yeah he's like oh okay well um you know it's cash only and since you're in a wheelchair you can just use the vip line I'm like oh all right cool so we went and got some money and hit the vip line and Alice Cooper couldn't have been nicer, man. He was uh, he signed uh, the Billion Dollar Babies record uh, sleeve for 
to Sydney. So now she has two things signed to her. She's not with us yet. So that's, she's, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, she's gonna have a hangman picture in her in her Winnie the Pooh room, and a signed uh, Alice oh, Cooper record in her Winnie the Pooh room. Quite quite the uh, the mixed bag there. To match her ACDC outfit. <laughs> yeah, to match her ACDC outfit. She's gonna be a rocker. She's, it's gonna be a weird kid just like us. So that that's awesome. I I should have should have uh, sent the uh, the Alice Cooper pop I have with him in the white suit. Uh, with y'all, they autographed. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. We have it, but I think hers is open. We don't, um, so who knows where the hell the box is at? So I've, got my, I've got mine. Oh, I've got mine. I was saying we could have brought ours oh. to the Alice Cooper Pop. Oh, yeah, they were priced different, too. The album was 60 I think the pops were like 50 to get signed, and the guitars were like 100 Sure, yeah. That's that's perfectly but fine. Yeah, they're out of the box. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but that's Thank awesome, you, though. Dear. Yeah, I think I think Cooper would would have been the only guy or only person would have come up there to see, besides Hangman would have been Alice Cooper. So uh, yeah, and I just in a, a close third for me probably would have been Karen uh, Karen Fukuhara, yeah. the actress who plays uh, what's her face on uh, the Boys, the little Asian chick. I haven't seen that show yet, so uh, I, I don't know. Duh. I know, I know. Okay, so I'm like in a bit of a pickle with Peacock and Amazon. So I canceled my Peacock service but it's still going through it's still showing up hey so so but the problem is that i can't take my credit card off their subscription thing until the 22nd it's really weird they won't allow me to take the credit card off so uh but i'm going to cancel peacock and then i'm going to just going to get the amazon uh account worth it so uh i'm just going to do that because i want to watch the boys i want to watch invincible and there's so many other movies i want to watch so it's definitely. it's it's on my to do list. It's definitely definitely on my to do list. So I want to see Nope. I do that surprisingly. Really? I kind of do. Yeah. I I did when I saw the trailer during the Super Bowl. The latest trailers, I just have no interest. I I I, I know what you're saying, but like I don't know, man. I feel like his stuff is pretty heady and pretty interesting and his, his stuff, unique. Well to, well, to me, it's hit or miss because yeah. uh, Get Out thought was great. Us, I think that fell flat. Uh, Candyman thought was great. Twilight Zone, it's it's a big roller coaster, up and down, up and down, up and down, depending on the episode. Yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> I don't have any confidence in after that. So last that's a trailer. nope for you, dog. <laughs> it, it's a nope. It's a nope for me. That's definitely a big nope <laughs> for me. So, uh, I, hey, I can't complain. I, I yeah. can't. I can't complain. Uh, but that's awesome. So overall, how would you rate this experience at Comic Palooza for 2022? Like a one, like a one out of ten. One out of ten. Oh, oh, well, one through ten or uh, one through five. It's up to you. I'll give it a. I'll, I'll give it a, a, a Meltzer rating. We'll go from one to five. Okay. One I'm going to five? give it a solid three. Okay. Midpoint. Solid three. Mid. Uh, because I mean, honestly, like if had there been bigger names for the comic stuff. Okay. You know. Coming from a comic fan, I would have brought more things to get autographed. Obviously, uh, I, I could okay. have, you know, you know, done a little business possibly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's again, that's very, that's very biased from my point of view. Um, and you know, I mean, maybe have guests that don't cancel on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, know. you can't, you, you can't control that. That's one thing that you can't control. Uh, and I think with Comic Palooza, it's each year it's either quantity or quality, depending on what they go for. Uh, I think this year they they put more on the overall appearance instead of the overall entertainment value. Um, I just I will... wonder though, like mm-hmm. it, it, the years can 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 the argument be made that the years they had MCU presence were big. Oh yeah, that that can definitely be a a thing, yeah. So I, I would say even if it's not like Chris Hemsworth or some shit like that, yeah. You mean to tell me you couldn't have brought in somebody MCU for all the movies and all the actors that have done shit for everything they put out? Echo canceled. She did. Yeah. Oh yeah, Echo, yeah, that's right. She canceled. Echo canceled. Okay. So my bad. Uh, okay, I retracted. I forgot about that because I didn't see her there, but. Okay, but then again, okay, so the girl who played Echo canceled. Yeah. All they could get was the girl who played Echo? Uh, well, 
not many of the actors are locally here in Texas, which is why San Diego makes a better choice for the celebrities more just because it's more local to them. But I will say that there are quite a few MCU actors who are free, who have, you know, a lot of free time during this, the next few weeks and last weekend. Uh, like for, for example, the kid who plays Flash Thompson in the Spider-Man movies, he's open, he's free and open. They could have brought him in. Yeah, um, would have brought, that would have brought a lot of people. Andrew Garfield has been on a big promotional spree for that TV show that he's on. He's been promoting the hell out of that for the last few months. It was Under God Sky or whatever, that detective show. Yeah, He's been promoting the hell out of that. Uh, you've got, what's another, just the, the girl, Kate Bishop, the girl who played Kate Bishop. Mm-hmm. She's she's free. She's open. And that would have covered not just Kate Bishop, but it would have covered Spider-Gwen in Spider-Verse. She was Spider-Gwen in the Spider-Verse yeah, movie. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the, there, even the kid who even the kid who played Bruno in Miss Marvel, he's open. So uh, they they could have put the effort to do that. Um, I don't know behind the scenes anymore. I was gonna say, uh, I, I I only hear rumblings and I only hear rumors from people who still talk to me from behind the scenes. <laughs> um, I will say this: when they announced Texas All Star Wrestling my inbox filled up with a lot of people asking if I was back. I'm like, nope, that's not me. That's not me. (laughs) They don't do sports anymore, so why would they want Aaron back? (laughs) Yeah, that wasn't me. And if, uh, because if it was me, the seats would have been filled. Exactly. (laughs) I saw the pictures. I saw the pictures. There's only so many angles or dark rooms you could take to try to fill up seats. Right, exactly. Exactly. So if it was me, those seats would have been filled. So yeah, and the thing is, I, again, I know I'm just armchair quarterbacking me. I'm just talking yeah. shit from the now. But like, the Houston Tourism Department, yeah, we're one of the biggest major metropolitan areas in the in the United States. Yeah, like, I don't know what Houston's spending its money on. It most certainly ain't fixing the fucking roads. So like, <laughs> like how you know what I mean? Like, the, is that the, the purse strings that tight they can't afford? You know what I mean? Like. Well, they might have to be paying out. Well, I don't know how close the Houston first is with the Texans, but that Deshaun Watson uh, trial ended in Houston Texans are paying out to uh, the victim well, to the victims in quotations. Is that Not, the city of Houston that's doing that, or yeah, the Texans organization? The Texans, the Texans. Okay, but I don't. But I don't know if Houston first is uh, connected to that organization anymore. I just don't understand, man. Uh, unless, unless I just don't know what these people are charging to make appearances. If it's just millions and millions of dollars, I'm not sure what no, it is no, because no. it can't be more than six figures for a lot of these people. It's not it even six be. figures. It's not, it's not even six. It's usually, it's usually five or less. But okay, so it's even, even further my point. Yeah. So like, okay, for example, when Sting came to Compluza the first time, along with uh, I think it was Sting Piper. Uh, Ron he Simmons and Million Dollar, Ma- Million Dollar Man. Yeah, I think he did. Wasn't he in there? Heenan was yes, he was there. Yeah, he was also there. Yes, yeah. yeah. Sting was. Uh, I think Sting was around forty-five thousand for the full weekend in makeup. Forty-five thousand. I was about to say he's in full-on gimmick and it's Sting yeah. for God's sake. Like... Sting. And this was when. And this was when he was signed with WWE. This is when he was signed with the WWE. Still. Uh, mm-hmm. Piper was like, I think he was like 25 or less. Piper was much less. But Piper had the longer line because, you know, if you're a They Live fan, you're going to go yeah. see Piper. If you're a sci-fi Hell fan. Hell comes to Frogtown, you're going to see yeah. Piper. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, it, like that's the cost. So they, they, they kind of sprinkled out more to accommodate all those things. Yeah, so, uh, But, hey. You know, it could be, it could have been worse. I, I I I don't have too many complaints. I know it sounds like I do, but it really honestly. But hey, Jackie Earl Jackie Earl Haley was back again. That's again. true. That's true. If you're a bad news bear slash uh, reboot of uh, Freddy slash Watchmen <laughs> slash um, even the Dark Shadows, he was the Butler in Dark Shadows. Like he yeah. he's done a lot of shit. So yeah, yeah I mean he, he's he almost good. everything. T one thousand was good. I mean, and then don't get me wrong, there's decent enough guests and stuff. I feel like there wasn't a tent pole. For a comic well, yet. and also I think Edward James Almost was back again for his like fifth time. So, I didn't see him there at all. I don't know Edward James Almost. He was advertised. He, he was supposed to be there. He didn't. I didn't hear him. He canceled, but then again, they didn't announce all the cancellations. 
they yeah. didn't mm-hmm. actually cancel it. Yeah, they, they kind of did the silent cancellations for some people. So, but you know what? Clerks 3 is about to come out. You couldn't get nobody from Clerks. You couldn't get Dante. Ming Chen was there. He was at the podcast table, though. Still, Ming Chen. Well, well like, they they probably paid Ming to be there. And it was also there, also promoting Coral Sword for the pre party and after party. So, wow, okay. I think that was more of a cross promotional thing. But um, I just feel like you could have got somebody from yeah. the viewers universe to come out. Yeah. Well, whatever. They've gotten yeah. Jay out there before. Yeah, they've had Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've had Jay out there. But the Jason Muse has been out there before. But you know what? That sounds like you still had some fun when you went both there. days. Sounds yeah, like you had fun when you went both days. So that's that's good to hear. And as long as your granddaughter, your goddaughter, sorry, your <sighs> goddaughter had <sighs> fun. <sighs> I'm not yeah. that old yet. He goes, as long I'm, as your I'm, granddaughter I'm, had fun. I was like, no, 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 goddaughter. Goddaughter. goddaughter yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm skipping ahead too far. So, uh, I know I just I know I just had a phantom heart attack or what I think was a phantom heart attack. We don't mean that old yet, man. Hey, Jaws twenty three just jumped at me from the screen. So get that sports on that and hit the time machine. So jumping from comic Palooza to a comic book movie that we've been wanting to review and talk about, um, one that's kind of gotten a lot of hate, a lot of memes, and very little fanfare, and that's Morbius. Now, uh, when this came to theaters. I wasn't able to see it in theaters because even though I kept telling the wife, I want to go see it. I want to go see it. she said that she didn't know that I wanted to go see it. So yeah, okay. I, 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 I don't know, but still um, that came out. I bought the steel book Blu-ray cause the artwork on that is amazing. That, yeah, that, artwork was, that was, was pretty slick. Um, bought it. I watched it again. And I had a lot of people tell me, don't watch it as terrible. Don't watch it as terrible. I'm like, well, still, I have to experience the terrible too. As well, I mean, it's part of the the thing. Yeah. Um, but but you know, I've I've always been uh, a Morbius fan. I like I like the character Morbius. He's been one of my top Spider Man sidekick slash hero slash villain. Anti hero. Anti hero. He's he's one of those he's one of those you know Spider Man characters that I've always enjoyed in the comics. Yeah. You know. So you know, for, like you know, for like you know, let's start this off. Uh, what are your top five Spider-Man characters? That's that's not Spider-Man. Like, who are your side characters or your characters from the Spider-Verse? Who are your favorites that are not Spider-Man? It could um, be villains. It could be sidekicks. It could be supporting characters. It could be whoever. Well, I mean, Venom is obviously one that's always going to be a top tier. So Venom and Carnage are going to be, yeah, you know, right up yeah. there. Uh, one of the more recent additions uh, for me in the last, you know. Eight to ten years or whatever. I, 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 surprisingly, I think it's been that long since they did it. Was the uh, the Kane Parker Scarlet Spider? Yeah, I love the design of the costume. I like the storyline they did with him when they had that book going with Stegman and Yost. And he's also um, local. And he, yeah, and it was all based in Houston. So like, I had a vested interest. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna read this. This is cool yeah. as hell. Um, Spider Man 2099. The uh, the well, I said no Spider Man. Oh shit! God damn it! Yeah. So, <laughs> fuck, you're right. Okay, no Spider Man. All right, so let me, let me start over. Venom, Carnage. Yeah. J. Jonah Jameson is always good for a laugh. Yeah. Every every iteration they've done of Spider-Man where they've had him in it, uh-huh. you can't help but chuckle because he's such a dick. Yeah. He's you know, he's, you know he, he rides the wave of the Spider-Man hate, so he needs Spider-Man. <laughs> he's, the Jim, best friends he, he's the Jim Cornette of uh, Spider-Verse. You got it. Exactly. Um, followed by that, I'm going to... Honestly, I'm not an MJ guy, so I can't say MJ. I, okay. I feel like she's a wishy-washy. That, that woman doesn't. She has commitment issues. Um, I've liked Doc Ock as a villain. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always thought he was underutilized in the okay. comics for a while because he was kind of one-dimensional. He's just he's an overweight guy. He's just I am superior to your Spider-Man in every way, you know? It's like, all right, yeah. we heard that a million times. But, like, when they did the Superior Spider-Man crossover with him, yeah, spinning out of, what, 700, I think? Amazing 700 or was yeah, it 800? 700. No, 700. 700. I mean, that they 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 breathe, they breathe new life in Doc Ock for me with that storyline. Uh, I've never appreciated Doc Ock more than when I read that story and they put him in Spider-Man's body. It was like, wow, what a cool way... 
to you know give honestly like he's a perennial loser doc yeah. you know what i mean yeah the stereotypical nerd who just you know can't get out of his own way he's he's got you know he's got incel mentality a lot but um <laughs> you know he's just okay and, and it gave a new dimension to the character when he finally had the powers of spider-man who he claimed to hate so much but then he saw how he could do good with it so he was yeah. at odds about it. It's like, okay, man, you, yeah. you know, you, you run that mouth and talk that shit until now you're in his shoes. Now you see, like, it ain't all that simple just being Spider-Man, you know? Uh, I think one of, my, I, I think one of the stories that they did was whenever he, I guess he was fighting uh, one of the spider slayers. Mm-hmm. And he, and he as Doc Ock as Spider-Man, punched the jaw off of the character. And he's like, oh my God, he was holding back this entire time. Yeah, and exactly. He didn't, he didn't realize he was always holding the strength back. Yeah, he didn't realize how many favors Peter was doing by not beating the shit out of him. Uh, um, So, yeah. uh, So, I guess I have one more. Um, I'll be honest with you. uh, Does does Gwen Stacy count? Yeah, she counts. Okay. Does she count as Spider Gwen? Uh, That's more of a transitional spider person, but I'll I'll let you have that one. You allow it? Okay. I'll I'll, allow it. I read the old school stuff with her in it from back in the day, you know, all the yeah. archives and stuff. Uh, I always thought she was kind of a lame character. I think his spot, I think his love interests are terrible outside of black cat, <laughs> but you know, whatever, that's just my opinion. Um, but when they, when they, they did the alternate thing with her as spider Gwen. Yeah. Dope. Five yeah. stars. I thought it was great. Okay. I'll She's throw cool mine out there. Uh, Craven the hunter, always a big fan of Craven the hunter just because yep. His mentality of him just always being the best. Even if he loses, he's still the best. Uh, always been a fan <laughs> of him. <clears throat> Electro, this, the goofy starfish mask. I, I don't I don't like the ultimate hitman version where he's like blue and he's like Kingpin's assassin. Like assassin oh, the burnt, uh, burnt face and all that? Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of that one. But I like the goofy green and gold with the, starfa- with the starfish face mask. That, that was pretty cool. Always, always a big fan of that one. Uh, gotta go venom because it's it's venom i mean who didn't enjoy venom back in the day especially with <laughs> especially with with uh, mcfarlane doing the uh the writing and the art, the art for that too yeah it's always it's always just really cool uh black cat because mm-hmm. hey early 2000s <laughs> terry dobson drawing the uh art you could not i had two of his shirts that he drew <laughs> <laughs> a black hat hey jen bought me one of those shirts she bought me one of them Aww. for a, 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 as a birthday gift even though she hated me wearing it uh she'd buy she'd buy me one of the shirts <laughs> that's funny so and then fifth morbius always been a morbius fan uh so they kind of jump into the movie off that part uh i saw it we mean both me and jen both watched it uh it's a hard it's hard to come up with like a one overall score because uh, I'll just break it down. Casting, they did a great casting with Jared Leto as Morbius. I thought that was a good casting. Sure. He should he should have shaved the beard because you know he ended up looking like zombie Morbius when he had that beard. Yeah. Um, the the cloth his costume that turned into the, the or his clothing that turned into the costume, but I thought it was a good rendition. That was pretty good. Special effects. Love the purple haze. Yes, it was very Nightcrawler esque with the the, the Bamfing style stuff, but it was still well done with the whole echo, the purple haze, the the slashing techniques, the yeah. fangs, all that. Thought it was well done. The atmosphere and like the scenery, the great again, good stuff. Them including the whole barge scene where he's getting his powers in the barge. Thought that was great too. Mm-hmm. The story is where it really falls apart, sure. because they could have done they, they could have pulled more from the Spider-Man universe to set things up, and even Morbius has his own kind of rogues gallery. The villain that they got, I thought was weak, and yeah. they, they, and they got Matt Smith, who is a good actor, who has a strong following sure. from Doctor Who, but again, he just I don't think he worked. I don't think he did it well. Um, so the story was weak. Uh, some of the fighting scenes with them to fighting where it was kind of, I felt like you got dizzy from like the venom esque style fight from the first movie. Yeah. 
you, you, you kind of forgot who was who when they're fighting. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, my fear is that this is Sony trying to throw any and every Spider-Man character that's not Spider-Man out there to try to catch in a buck and to try to find those coattails to ride to stardom. And yeah. Morbius is a, could have been a strong character. Could have been a strong character. Mm-hmm. I just feel that where it failed that was they didn't have people going reading the script and being like, nah, change that. Say this out loud because it, yes, it looks good on paper, but say it out loud and see how it sounds. Right. They should have they should have had somebody in the room doing that as they're writing, and they didn't. Well, it's a quick side note because they have nobody from Marvel in the room with them. As yeah, far as I'm I, concerned. Because... And I know I saw that was a tweet or whatever that Kevin Feige said that every Spider-Man side character doesn't need a movie. Right. That was kind of the thing is that every Spider-Man side character does not need a movie, and he's right. They don't. They yeah. really don't. Uh, so Morbius could have had a good movie. The after credits scene felt forced. It felt Unnes- yeah, unnecessary. Didn't didn't need to happen. The th- th- there's just a lot of things that didn't need to happen. It, I mean, ah, it's and it's frustrating because this could have been a good movie, mm-hmm. and I think Jared Leto suffers from bad writers and bad directors. Yeah, uh, I think he just wants to be part of something big, and he's just trying to strike gold where he can. And I get that as an actor, you're doing your job and you want to make money. Yeah. Um, and I think there's something to be said for the stereotypical internet uh, hate mongering, uh, yeah. the the lynch mobs that get online, and well, my friend said it's bad, so now I say it's bad. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of that going on because it's just trendy to shit on something. That's yeah, the fucking yeah. internet for you. But I, 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 I find it hard to disagree with you on all those points. I feel like that's all where everything fell short for me too was the story. I feel like it could have been way better. Um, you could have uh, – man, that's the thing. Kevin Feige said it. Not every one of these guys needs a damn movie. Yeah. And if you're taking all these Spider-Man villains and characters and you're taking yeah. the Spider-Man out of it, yeah, you're fucking up. All this, yep. the, all this is doing is attesting to how badly they need Marvel involved, and yep. how much money Sony has. Sony has way much more money than they have since. <laughs> Sadly enough, Sony's becoming like the full moon movies of the Marvel properties right now. Yeah, it's a true story. <laughs> so I mean, but I mean, and I thought about this: like, how could they have saved the movie, or saved it, not saved it, but done it differently? Now I was really thinking about this. You can't pull Blade because Blade's part of New Line. And new lines universal, so <clears throat> you can't really pull blade. But what could you have done to really keep things going, introduce the spot the, the spider verse surrounding characters to keep those going, as well as keep the mythos happening? And I thought about that. And here, here's what I would have done. Here and this again, this is what I would have done. First things first, Matt Smith's character, mm-hmm. I would not have had him be. Uh, I forget the name of the character who was in the comics and who was in the movie. I forget. <clears throat> the fucking D tier yeah. character. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah. I would have, I would still had him in the movie, but I would have had him as a different character. Who Smythe. would have, Smythe. Smythe. Exactly. That's actually what I was going to say was Smythe. <laughs> Alistair Smythe. The whole time I was thinking, why is this not Smythe? <laughs> yeah. He's Smythe. He should have been Smythe. Should have been. <laughs> So, but but we but we need somebody for Morbius to fight. You have to have the fight. You have to have yeah. it. So, what's the whole point of Morbius? He's looking for a cure. He's looking for a cure for a system. He's experimenting on things. We saw him experiment on animals. What did, what mm-hmm. animal was he experimenting? Ah, blah blah. What was he experimenting on? Rats. What is a known rat villain in the Spider-Man universe? Vermin. That could that could have had a great just bloody violent brawl. Vermin. 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 Yeah. Here's what you could have done. Morbius changes. He, he does this experiment. He's on the barge. He does this and this and this. But he needs to find a cure. What does he do? Experiments on rats. Experiments on humans. Combining both of those because he needs to find something to turn him back. You hear about the you hear about everyday studies about uh, scientists growing ears on top of rats as uh, body harvesting. Fingers, mm, yeah. toes, stuff like that as body harvesting on rats. Comes back mm-hmm. to rats again. We he accidentally creates vermin. Yep. Vermin's going around killing people, framing Morbius, framing mm-hmm. 
sets up a good fight. They fight in the sewers. That would have been a great battle to see a living vampire I fighting. Think I, a... where, I think I know where you're going with this, but I'll let you say it. Because if, if I'm wrong, then I'm very shocked that I'm wrong. But you have a battle in the sewers. You know, they're fighting vermin versus Morbius. You know, it all they have their bat, battle and all that. They, they do that setup and all that. Vermin, it, vermin gets badly damaged. He's still alive because you have to. You, you can't kill off a character yet. Mm. Uh, but you have vermin. You have him run off in the sewers and everything like that. Who's hanging out in the sewers? Like getting thrown back into the sewers from another dimension that's just happened to have his lair in the sewers? Lizard. Connors. Yep. There's Connors. Connors walks up to Morbius, a wounded and heavily damaged Morbius. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, I can help you, but I've got my own problems along with other pests. That feels more natural. Yeah. What do you mean pests? What do you mean pests? Like what? And he goes like what? Like roaches? Like roaches? No. Spiders. Spiders. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, that's uh, way better. I, honestly, I really thought you were about to tell me that we could have had the um, Craven's Last Hunt storyline kick off at this movie. No, 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 no. You, you you would save Craven for later on because Vermin's still running around, still doing his damage and everything like that. Yeah, but you then, got a lot of Apex <clears throat> Predators running around in the sewer. Yeah. You could have at least introduced Craven because you're going to do a Craven movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. You could have at least introduced Craven as a, so, as a game hunter. Yeah. So you've got three people or three monsters going around killing people for different reasons. Morbius, yeah. blood, uh, lizard, experimentation, and or uh, animal craziness. Vermin, again, animal rage, just, you know, bloodlust. The, the champion of the champion of all rats. What, what ends up happening? Who, who's there to, you know, who needs something? That's when you bring in Jameson to call in a big gun. We need a hunter. We need somebody to come take care of this. Right, you bring in Craven. Cra- yeah, Craven, you could have a, yeah. He, he Craven's the Quint from uh from Jaws coming mm-hmm. in to uh do all this. And you feasibly could have done all that without mentioning Spider-Man just yet. Just yet, you hint, it, you know, the whole spider thing. Right. You hint to the whole uh, webhead stuff, like newspapers in the background. People talking about, oh, did you see Spider? And it cuts off before the, right. you, you get the full mention of the name. There are other ways that this movie could have gone. I think the Vermin way would have been a better one just mm-hmm. because it ties more loose ends to other characters versus <clears throat> versus not Alistair Smith. And, then, and again, with Alistair Smith in the background, he's studying yeah. Morbius. He's building mm-hmm. Slayers. He's doing all of this mm-hmm. in the background. Sets up a bigger story. You know, what if, you know, again, we, we know movies don't follow the comics completely at all. No. But what if we have Smythe set up the Sinister Six? He's the one who sets it up. He's the benefactor. He's the uh, millionaire putting it all together. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what's her face? Um, Silvermane's daughter. Who, Rose? Not Rose. No, the, the with the white hair. Silver Sable. Yeah, Silver Sable. No, yeah, that's, her... that's his daughter? Uh, uh, Silvermane? Yeah. yeah. I thought Silver Sable was somebody else. No, unless I'm uh, wrong. Because Silver Sable was, uh, uh, yeah, because Silver Man was the old man, right? The old man cat burger guy? Yeah. Yeah, his daughter was uh, Silver Sable. Okay. But well, yeah, I'm just I mean, saying, like, as far as, like, yeah. having somebody out there on Smythe's behalf doing his dirty work and shit like that, because obviously Smythe can't do it. He's yeah, he's got to keep up. his hands clean. He's right. Gotta keep his... I mean, Smythe could be the new version of Norman Osborn, but the more Lex, Lu... Lex Luthor type of Norman Osborn. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you couldn't have, you, you couldn't have done better than having Matt Smith just shift into mm. that role as Smythe. That would have been perfect. And honestly, yeah. for Vermin, uh, yeah. you for my money, it would have to be Doug Jones, the the guy who uh, the oh, yeah. character actor for um, uh, all or, those scary films, or, or even the guy who did um, Golem in the Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh God, why can't yeah, I well, his name? again? He played a. Claw? Didn't he play Ulysses Claw? He but Claw, I mean, yeah. but I mean, he could do a bodysuit and voice. So true, true. Yeah, but like as, as for to me, Doug Jones would at least have to be the body because he's so well, skinny and gaggly. But Doug yeah. Jones is also really tall too. Yeah. Vern could be tall. Uh, yeah. I was still, I was still having him kind of hunched over, kind of. Well, the, then, but yeah, the creep he, factor, like Doug Jones, can contort his body real bad. He yeah, can do he, all that shit. He can. He, he can. No, yeah. no, no, no. I would not have got Doug Jones for Vermin. 
No, 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 no. Bill Skarsgård. Pennywise. Ooh, Bill Skarsgård that played the new Pennywise uh, as Vermin. That would have been good. Yeah, he, he would have done good, too. Yeah, I think he would have had the creep factor, like, maxed out. Oh, so. man. So, yeah, Morbius, I would say, uh, suffers from a lot of internet hate hype. Um, it does. It's just it's it's cursed from the very from the very beginning because it's not involved with Spider Man. It was all forced at the end and the after credits. If they would have well, honestly, it would have done better if they was just not even mentioned Spider Man at all. It probably would have been okay. Well, what got people's attention was when they showed the trailers. You saw the McGuire Spider Man in the background, right? And so people that people were like, oh, well, what the hell's going on? Is this tied into No Way Home? They trolled you know, what, us. What's yeah. happening? And I think the trailer had more gave people more hype than the movie and that's what hurt the movie was because people were expecting no way home levels of writing and acting mm -hmm. yeah and instead we got sony's full moon picture company puppet master six uh, with with better with better graphics with better graphics right right <clears throat> So. so eventually I'll eventually I'll own the hard copy of it, but like yeah. I've found myself nowadays more recently being very selective about hard copies of shit I buy. Yeah. Very selective. Um, I, I do agree with you on that. Um <clears throat> some of the steel books I do have, uh I get them just in case I want to sell them later because steel books are still on the rise. Right. I mean, for example, <clears throat> for example, Halloween kills. I pay thirty bucks for the steel book. Haven't opened it yet. It is still sealed. Wow. I could probably sell that thing for over a hundred dollars. That's insane. I've got a bunch of steelbooks in that living room over there. I got like Guardians, Guardians Two. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I got a bunch of cool shit on steelbook. So, and, and I and I, I could probably sell it for over a hundred just because of the artwork alone on the steelbook. That's People crazy. People love, and it's un, and again, it's unopened. It's still sealed up. So, yeah, I, I still. I'm like excited for the next one, dude. Yeah, how we ends. I, I've got to see how they wrap this up. Uh, yeah, same here. Everyone, everyone has to go. They're, they're going to make all. Going, it's going to make all the money. Well, the trailer's supposed to drop uh, this weekend because San Diego's this weekend. Oh shit! So, There's a lot of shit happening this weekend then. So yeah, so ah, um, we're San supposed Diego. to get a. So yeah, so oh, let's talk rumors. Let's talk San Diego rumors then. So <clears throat> this weekend we're supposed to get Halloween ends the trailer. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to get uh, a Fantastic Four reveal that you can see they're going to happen this week or happen at D23 for a Fantastic Four. Oh, man. <clears throat> We're supposed to get uh, a bigger Black Adam preview this weekend. Okay. <clears throat> We're supposed to get the first teaser of Kong, the uh, Netflix series that's supposed to happen. Ooh, okay. Because uh, Legendary is supposed to have a big th debut this weekend. They're, they're going to do a, a full thing for Legendary. Because... Okay. Warner Brothers isn't showing anything. Yeah. That's weird. So we're, we're supposed to get House of Dragons, which is the Game of Thrones prequel show. Sure. Uh, we're supposed to get Lord of the Rings. They're, uh, I think, Amazon show or they're... Um, yeah, they're, they're uh, Amazon. They're big. Amazon? Big, yeah, the Lord of the Rings is Amazon. Yeah. So Amazon show for Lord of the Rings. We're supposed to get a debut of that, a trailer for that. Um, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to get, uh, yeah, Godzilla... Kong, uh, legendary stuff, all of that. Uh, I believe also Invincible season two is supposed to get a, a big reveal or something. Nice. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think what else. There, there's something else on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of what it is. Uh, oh, Twist the Metal, the teaser for Twist the Metal, the show. Oh really? Yeah, that's awesome. I'm sorry yeah. about the dog. Our dog's dumb, and she don't know when to shut the hell up when it's hey. two thirty at night. Hey, the, hey, the dog knows that Twist the Metal's coming, and it, that dog is hyped. Yeah, she's a, she's a big she's a big Samoa Joe fan. <laughs> Samoa Joe, hey, okay, it's what he yeah. does. I'm excited about. I mean, and honestly, man, for me, I'm always this way though. Like the less I know, the better. Like I love to be yes. completely blown away. <laughs> uh, I know they'll probably they'll probably stream a lot of shit like online. Yeah. Um, so maybe, maybe my Saturday might be working on art and having, to, <laughs> you know, YouTube yeah. up on the TV to see what they're, uh, what they're dropping. But yeah, D23 is going to be a huge thing, obviously with all the Marvel stuff that's going to be flowing out of the D23, right. I'd imagine. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Hopefully we hear something about Blade because that was, that yeah. was Blade's voice at the end of Eternals. 
It was, and they said that they've already filmed his stuff. That whatever he needs to do for going forward, his stuff has been filmed. So God damn it. I want it so bad. And then like they're they're bringing back Daredevil for Disney Plus for Echo. For Echo. Uh, Echo, Daredevil, and Kingpin are going to be an Echo. Oh, man, that's going to be so good. There's and supposedly Hawkeye as well. Dude, mm. it is the, I mean, for all the bitching people do about the Netflix <laughs> or the, the Disney Plus series, how it's not yeah. good enough, not this, not that. Shut up, my yeah. God! <clears throat> Can you please appreciate something? You know anything? What? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking picky ass, whiny mother. I'm so sick so, of people, dude. I'm sorry. Here's the thing. <laughs> I have an 11-year-old who's obsessed with Star Wars. And to her, there has not been bad Star Wars yet. And that's her. Okay. That, well, that's good. her. She's, she's enjoying happy. everything. She's happy. She's loving everything. She's reading the books. She's reading the adult novels. You know, the ones for, like, the reading level, you know, of high school to college kids. She's sure. reading those. We picked up a book that she found at uh, Barnes & Noble's a few weeks ago um, that talk about Hera and... Um, uh, Kanan from uh, Rebels that she wants to read because she loves Rebels. That's so awesome. she is like dying for new anything new from Star Wars on trailers or anything. She's she wants an Ahsoka trailer. She wants the the uh, the Anon trailer for the 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 guy from uh, Rogue One. She just wants anything from Star Wars because she's like she's like turning into Tyrone Biggins with like you know got any more that Star Wars <laughs> like scratching her neck, <laughs> scratching her chins. Waiting for that's beautiful though, Star man. Wars. I, 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 that's and that's what you want to hear. That's and then really at the end of the day, that's what Disney wants. Yeah. I mean, all the all the old jaded fans. I mean, they don't give a shit what they say because yeah. at the end of the day, you're going to be dead in 20 years anyway. Who gives a <laughs> shit? They need new fans. Yeah. So I mean, I've know. got I've got Gwen begging me to play Fallen Order to replay, start playing Fallen Order again, so she can see what happens to the story because she saw that she saw the teaser for Fallen Order two, and she's like, Daddy, you need to play. Daddy, you need to play because. <laughs> <laughs> because when that game comes out, we got to get it. When that game comes out, we got to get it. Yeah. So yeah, she's like all in for that. And so that's, that's awesome. You know, it's, it's that's what thing. you want, man. It's, it's yeah. good. And I mean, I know whenever Sydney comes, she's going to end up liking whatever she likes. And you best believe I'm going to be a sucker for buying every like before <laughs> I can. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you could see this room, I'm surrounded by shit I've loved since I was like three. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like, who am I going to be to deny my daughter if she likes something stupid like Coco Melon? Then okay, we're getting Coco She's Melon not shit. Watching Coco Melon, we're watching <laughs> or Bluey, whatever the hell uh, is hot. The new just, hotness for the kids on the streets. Just, I mean, just you know, just whatever you do, don't let her watch Ka- Caillou. Don't ever let her watch Caillou. No, we are anti Caillou across the board. I don't Good. want that whiny bitch kid having any kind of influence on my daughter. You're rebooting him. Fuck that kid. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, they better reboot him his ass across the river. I was about to say, reboot his ass down the fucking drop him off in the hood and let him, let him figure it out. Fuck that kid. <laughs> Caillou. It's like a make, like a, make a wish a Charlie two. Brown. Oh, man. And, dude, you know what? Okay, so today after I went to, to go see the, the heart doctors and stuff like that, yeah. uh, I was in Clear Lake. I was just kind of meandering around. I ended up going to this Goodwill we always go to that we like a lot. Yeah. And you know how Goodwill sells VHS tapes for like 79 cents and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We've got a decent, really nice uh, VCR. Uh, you've seen it. But yeah, um, I found a thing. It was a tape for 79 cents. The Postal Service had put out uh, a tape of all the old classic Christmas stuff. Yeah. Like the stop motion animation. Yeah. It's just literally just a compilation of all the songs and the and <laughs> it's like a music video. Those scenes. Yes. Okay. And unopened. And uh, when I called Nicole, it's like, hey, look, they got this. She's like, oh, my God, get it for Sydney. <laughs> because I know for me, and I've, I've converted my wife, uh, mm-hmm. I'm a big Christmas guy. I love Christmas. I love that time of year. I love the idea yep. of people just trying to reset their hearts and minds yep. and trying to, like, in, you know, the all things on, just try to figure out life for another year, man, because this world sucks and the world hates us and it's, yep. and it's, it's falling apart. But we just got to do our best to try to just – do something good for somebody else, man. And Christmas I think is Christmas a is a great time for that. And so Christmas is a good time. I want that for my daughter. I want her to, to and you know, I want her to, and this is my personal preference. She's going to learn all about Christmas on both sides of it. You know what I mean? Not just, yeah. not just the commercial side, but I want her to have that moral parameter. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think Christmas does that for a lot of children. It's the idea well, of giving, not just receiving, Yes. Yeah. you know, for Devin, 
growing up with Devin, and you know, every time Christmas came around, you best believe Uncle Chris was going to shell out money so Devin could get toys for or get yeah. presents for his mama and popo and his mom mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. It's it's, and I couldn't be more happy to do that, and I'm going to do that with her as well. And, and and that's a great thing. That's a great thing. I mean, we have. I went from having literally no kids' Christmas movies at all to now having almost all of them, from the stop motions <laughs> to mm-hmm. Grinch to Grinch, both live action and animation, of to course. the Lego Lego Christmas movies. <laughs> uh, we, we we have stop motions. We have what's another one? Uh, the comedies like Elf. Like okay, five Elf. Yeah. Five years ago, yeah, I never watched Elf. Five years ago, I never watched Elf. Now, really, it's a Christmas tradition. That movie is amazing, dude. We watch Elf. We watch Home Alone one and two. We watch the Santa Claus. We watch Jingle All the Way. Jingle All the Way. I was about to say, yeah. Um, we we do the twenty four hour marathon of a Christmas story that comes on. Yes. Um, but you know, with those, I have my own movies that I watch every Christmas, like Krampus. Black Christmas and Krampus. Black yeah. Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Black Christmas. Krampus. Christmas. <clears throat> oh, Silent yeah, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Hey, those Christmas parties were awesome. Santa yes. Slay. <laughs> we we should do a Thanksgiving party and watch Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving one and three. Yeah, one through three. <laughs> no, like no, there's it's only one and three because. Oh, is that right? Did they they did no, that intentionally? Here, here's here, here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. So they made the first movie, and they they're like, you know what? We're skipping the sequel. We're going straight to the third one. So that's what they did. Oh my god! I didn't realize that. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah, all the Christmas horror movies I love. All the Christmas family movies are great as well. Charlie Brown Christmas, we watched that one. So oh, we watch, yeah, dude. We watch all of them, and they're all great. Um, I think the only one that I had a hard time finding this year, or last year toward the holiday season, was a uh, copy of Christmas Vacation because everybody apparently ordered that. Uh, yeah. Back in November. And that was that was the only hard one I, that that was finding was that one, so. I can't wait, man. I mean, we, we've we've pre-gamed so much. We bought so many things. Like we've got like storybooks, <laughs> uh, different little Disney storybooks and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I want to read to my daughter. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I know that <clears throat> one of the things everybody's told me is like, you have no idea how bad it's going to be, and your kid's going to be a nightmare and all this shit. Like I understand no, no. that. I totally get uh, that, but. I can't just put a screen in front of my kid. My kid's going to earn her oh, screen no. time. Yeah, my kid's going to be raised like I was raised, man. Like, I didn't always have a Nintendo in my face. Like, yeah, that's what we tried to do, uh, too. I would go outside and shoot basketball at my basketball goal. Or I would, mm-hmm. you know, go outside and play with my G.I. Joes and shit like that in the yard, ride my bike around the yard. I want my kid to have a normal life, yeah. man. I don't want her to, you know, of course, exactly. safely. But, like, yeah. I can't wait, dude. I can't wait till she tells me, can we read the... Princess and the Frog story. We'll, we'll read it for the four thousand seven hundred and twenty third time. Of course well, we will. You know, uh, Gwen did that to me too. With she had this construction book where it was like a interactive construction where you like you pull things and a bulldozer goes across the screen or yeah. goes across the book. We had that and we had to read that every night when she was young. Uh, we did it for a while, and then her brother was born, and she's like, <laughs> she's like, nope, I'm done. Go read it to him. <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm a big girl now. I've got my toddler bed. Go read it to him. I'm done. I'm like, are you sure? He goes, she goes, yeah, yeah. I got my nightlight. Oh, I'm like, God, oh, that's going to okay. break my heart, man. <laughs> that's going to break my heart when my daughter's too cool for me. I'm like, ah, I'll just, uh, I'll just kill you, me. But you know what? But you know what? I may, I may have lost that. But the cool thing, though, is that now whenever she wants to – when she's invested in the show, she wants me to watch it with her. So like Clone Wars, I survived all seven seasons of the Clone Wars – even the episodes that dragged out and went nowhere. I survived right. those things. I know all about Hondo, the pirate from Clone Wars, and also in <laughs> Rebels. I know all I, I know all the Star Wars stuff. I sat through all four seasons of uh of uh Camp Cretaceous with Parker watching dinosaurs and also them fighting robots. Okay, there are robots in Jurassic Park. <laughs> of course there How? Are. How? I don't get that. But they're there, and they're not just any robots. These are like the robot dogs that you, that you see in like Black Mirror. These are like oh, the God. deadly robot dogs. They're there, but wow. So you, you, it's it's just an evolution of uh, how to do those things with the kids, and uh, you just kind of have to know where it, direction they're going in. The yeah. more that you're involved in their life, the more you'll be able to see where they're going, and you can't control it. Yeah. You just can help guide 
to a better decision. And yeah, I, I'm never ever going to make her be into something she's not into. Like, if she decides she wants to be in band, she'll be in band and she gets yeah. older. If she, if she decides she takes a big interest in Stephen Hawking, well, guess what, dude? We're going to be watching Stephen Hawking videos and shit. Whatever it is that she decides hey, she likes, I want her to and, be her. And whatever she does, you know what you could do? Whatever she does, just explain to her the good side and the bad side and then try to explain to her the bad side. Like, this past summer, the kids did swimming. They, in their mind, thought that, okay, all they're going to do is just playing a pool not realizing that they have to do races and learn actually how to swim and do relays and actually have to do exercises and all that. And they hated it for the first two weeks, but now they love doing the swimming shit, like racing and stuff like that. They love doing that. Uh, So that, that that was a good and a bad, but you know, it's what they wanted to do. But you know, Parker's also the, you know, he's going to follow his big sister to whatever she does because she's doing it. And I could try to warn them about what's going to happen, but you know, if they choose to listen, that's their choice. You know, and it's it's just funny. I know that this is like my third or fourth time bringing up kids and being all sappy and shit. But like, I'm telling you, man. Like, I was told that's like I told Nicole when I was like, I gotta go to the doctor. Like, the the just the idea of mortality has mm-hmm. never been more real for me than it is right now. I've never thought about anybody yeah. outside of myself for a long time <clears throat> until well, I met her. Well, and... it's the, the thing. The thing is, with me, you have kids, is that <laughs> your life clock ticks louder. <laughs> That's it just does. the truth. Yeah. The life clock ticks louder and you just kind of have to fight each day until you wake up the next day. And that's it. There, 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 there's no secret. Enjoy. I, know, I just, I just want to keep waking up, you know, <laughs> and that was the whole thing. Hey, I was j- just, just keep waking up until you could, until you could pawn them off on somebody else and you can sleep in late. That's what I try. That's what I do every Sunday. <laughs> I've told everybody who has been like, We'll watch your good for you. I'm like, don't think for a fucking second I'm not pulling that string there, pal. Like, I'm going oh, to call that. Oh, I'm going to call that fucking favor. Oh, in. Are you oh, kidding me? Oh, oh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People, <laughs> people will tell you that. People will tell you that until you call them up, and then all of a sudden their their phone number changes numbers, and you no. can't get a hold of them. Listen, though, <laughs> I, 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 I'm fairly confident in saying I can think of at least four different women off the top of my head that I know would be there to help us. Two grandparents. Uh, an ant, uh, a real ant, <laughs> I, and an ant, ant. Hey, we were free gaming, and I told you what happened yeah, earlier. Yeah. We were free gaming, and I told you what happened earlier with. Uh, I know, but out of four yeah. grandparents, one's only reliable. Well, I don't know. Our, our, the grandparents <laughs> on in, in our circle have been pretty good so far. I yes. can't imagine. And that's good. Different. And that's great. That's great. That's great. But. So. We're going to get out of this life lesson. <laughs> yeah, no kids. kidding, man. I know. We just got all fucking dad uh, fucking vibes and shit. So we, we went all damn the dad on you guys. Sorry. Yeah, pretty much. So <laughs> thank you for listening. And if you made it this far, yeah, give yourself a pat on the bat and go get yourself a Carbock Clutch City beer because those things are delicious. And we are not sponsored or paid for by them, but they're damn tasty. Right. So And go hug your kids. Call your mom. Call your dad. Do something. Like I, I'm not calling my mom. <laughs> well, not your mom. I mean, no, no offense to your so, mom, but like, you know. <laughs> so thank you for lasting this long, and we'll be back whenever, and talk about whatever, and I'll post this whenever. However. So, <laughs> however. Why is Gamora? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. This is going up through SoundCloud. Or uh, Podbean. I'm sorry, just going through Podbean. But thank you for listening. Yeah, we have you. a YouTube channel. Go look. Go search it. Uh, we've got a, a Red Bubble and Tea Public store. Go buy stuff. Chris is on Collecting Mania on Instagram, and also Chris Foreman, artist on Instagram. Go look him up if you want cool art because he does customs. It's all custom. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I, as of right now, as it stands, I'm for sure going to be doing a show in Philadelphia in October. Uh, the non-sport trading card show. Uh, I'm actually a guest for that show. It's going to be a whole different ball game. See, so. You know what? He's going to be in Philadelphia. For, so for that weekend, it's going to be always sunny. Go see him at that show. <laughs> It'll be if great. I could, if I if I <laughs> somehow find the extra time, I think isn't that isn't that bar like in California? It's not even in Philly. No, the front of it is in Philadelphia. The okay. inside is in LA. Okay, I'm about to say, if I can somehow, if I just <laughs> have a shit show and I have all the time in the world, I'm going to go find it. I'm going to Uber over to it and take a picture in front of the, uh... Always sunny? Yeah, always sunny bar. Be kind of funny. Hey, just, hey, I've seen parking wars. Beware those parking spaces out there in the oh, streets of Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I've, I've watched, I've watched five seasons of parking wars. Watch out. 
Uh, duly noted. Again, I won't be driving myself. I'll be fine. <laughs> so it'll be so it'll be the Uber guy's problem. Yeah. So again, so thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I'm Aaron. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, you sound it. You sound it. And Always. honestly, this would be the time where I say fuck ponchos, but they're actually closing down. <laughs> and oh, we didn't even talk about that, man. <laughs> you know, okay. we'll talk about them next time. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll talk we'll about them next time. time. So until then. Uh, rest in peace. We'll talk about it next time. <laughs> she wants to just give it all away. Yeah, you know, you gotta save something for people to come back, so, you know. That's right. You no, know, fuck Bonchos. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, check out CrossTheStreamsMedia.com to hear more episodes of this podcast and the other shows on the Cross the Streams Network. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you download your favorite shows. Visit CrossTheStreamsMedia.com for more information. See you next time. Cross. This has been a Cross the Streams Media Podcast.